Deluxe Super Zigzag. This is a walking foot machine with the zigzag capabilities, which it means it can has a stitch width of from zero to five. So you just press that, push it over, and then you'll see the needle moves. It also has be able to position from middle to right to the left and then back again. It does not it doesn't come with a knee lift, but just a regular hand lift like that. Uh, it does not come with a bias binding or this needle plate. I purchased this aftermarket so that way I have the laser engraved lines. Also has reverse, but it's not spring loaded, so you have to do it manually. And this is also your uh, stitch length adjustment, which is this, rotate this out. That's your longest stitch forward, longest stitch reverse. As you can see, I keep mine right about there. The paint's been wearing. All right, just tighten it in that way. I don't go any longer when I'm going forward. It did not come with the Sailrite power wheel with the posi pin. I purchased that separately from eBay. Sailrite does not sell you this machine unless you, this power wheel unless you have a Sailrite machine. So this is getting it from somebody else that might be parting something out is the only way to get it. It does have a regular. It's a little bit more powerful than a regular home sewing machine motor. I think it's around 9,000 RPMs. But you can, if I want to at a later date, I can hook up uh, an industrial motor, a servo motor, or a clutch motor. It'd be more likely to be a servo motor. And then we can take a look at the underside. I did put industrial hinges on there. Um, before we take a look at the underside, uh, it's got a um, working base of right around nine inches. One of the reasons why I got it, has more space for material to go through. Has an overall width of around 16 inches. Makes it nice. And then the height, that's, that's right around I'd say four and a half of height. Uh, I did add this LED light, it's magnetic. I just have it running down the corner of my table right there where the power cord goes down as well. Um, the hinges didn't come with this machine. Um, a table doesn't come with this machine. There isn't a um, portable stand that comes with it or anything or a carrying case if you want to uh basically you have to build those stuff i mean there's some places that will make you a table to as long as you tell them what your specs are is for you just tell them what your machine is they'll be able to build you a table which is in you know the few hundred dollar range um so i wasn't i built the table myself it's pretty much standard size for industrial table it's a little over two feet wide uh with a little over four feet, four feet long. I do have a metal tape on here. That way I can just measure things out real quick. Thickness is right around an inch and a half. I have two pieces of uh, three quarter inch plywood. And then I have hardwood trim around the side. So it's very, definitely very sturdy. And then as far as uh, the table base, it's just three quarter inch uh, black, black pipe. And with the, I put uh, flanges on the feet. That way I can adjust the level either direction. Um, and then there's the foot pedal. Uh, like I said, you would have to, if you did, if you did add a uh, industrial machine, uh, industrial motor, you, I would have to add, do something to be able to use the, you know, regular foot pedal as that, you know, come on 
when you buy a, a regular industrial machine. I would consider this machine semi-industrial just because it is it does power through a lot of stuff. I mean, it does it does only have like a three h inch clearance, so that is to me that's the only downfall. So you can't get real real thick materials in there, but you don't have any problems as far as this machine. Um, sewn through any type of webbing, canvas, uh, anything like that. Uh, my primary purpose right now is I've been sewing uh, shopping bags like this one. This is an uh, old beam, uh, coffee beam sack and I put edge banding on it and straps. Also, uh, I do have intentions to sew something like this up, which is a tree saddle. Um, so you can see right there, there is several layers of webbing in there and this machine will have no problem uh, going through that. Uh, all right, so then I have, I have industrial hinges. Um, I did have to modify the hinge pins a little bit. I didn't want to mess around with the holes as far as hole size in the machine itself. I, I just uh, see it grind it down the pins on the hinges itself and that way they fit in and they fit in well and they work uh if you don't want to do that you can get regular uh standard home sewing machine hinges you can find those anywhere from serrite to sewing gold to um uh, gold star tool or even ebay you, you know i paid i paid less than ten dollars for these industrial hinges they didn't come with the screws but the the rubber part and the metal part this is what they did come with um, oh, I also added the thread stand, which has been working out really nice. I chose this one that screws down with three holes. I chose that one over the industrial, the one normal industrial thread stand that has, you know, probably half inch, three quarter inch posts that you drill a hole through. That way, if I didn't like the position of it, I could easily patch those holes and move it. Um, and then then you can see the thread on the right is my bobbin thread I have going through here through the bottom of the bottom of the post there around the the piece here which uh it's not really a tensioner but it helps the thread spin and then of course you got your bobbin winder right there which which is nice with the posi pin as you can Take the pin out, and then the wheel can rotate, and the needle doesn't move. So you can actually wind your bobbin without having your needle go up and down. And then it's just as easy to put it back in there, and then the needle moves. But as far as threading, uh, normally what I do, because I like having this stuff set up at the same time, um, I th take my top thread, I run it through the top of the post, around this twice, this little, this little pigtail here, you can see how that goes through there. Down through this hole, up and around, down, through the tensioning plates, up and around, and you make sure you catch the take up spring right there, and then what it does, it goes up and around and catches in there. Your take up leather, lever then you go down through the hole and then left to right so there's that all right so let's take a look at the bottom of the machine very heavy duty everything's you know been working really well this does take class size 15 bobbin which you know so when you're using bigger thread like the 92 and stuff it does it's uh it's not a, it's not a little, it, it doesn't take much to go run through a, uh, I will, when I get to my next project, I will show a video of it actually sewing, but right now I do have the Sailorite one inch binder, uh, attached to this and it does work very well. I did have another one, uh, one inch binder from, I've 
purchased off of eBay and it does, it take, it took some messing around with, but I did end up getting it working right. But this one, honestly, it really, it, it, it took a lot less time and it's been more consistent. So I've been really happy with it. Um, a lot of these parts interchange on this machine, interchange with the sale right stuff. Like you can get a new, um, uh, reverse forward and reverse ladder lever that you know controls your stitch length you can get a new one of those uh that actually springs up and down so far i don't really don't have a problem with it doing it manually um it takes the it takes industrial size needles is 135 by 17 which you can get those almost anywhere um i think right now i have i mean the machine does come with a little pack of uh, chinese needles i mean this is a chinese machine um it still works well it's the same basically the same thing um as a lot of the other models you know with from sailrite or rex or family so or you know just any of the you know this one just happens to be bigger the a lot of those other ones they have a smaller bed they have a working area. There's seven inches or less. So I wanted a bigger sewing bed area. That's why I went with this. But a lot of the stuff like this needle plate here is from Sailrite. So that's where I found it. And so I got that. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. Everything's been working really well. Uh, oiling, it's really easy. This, oh, the Sailrite manual, you know, pretty much covers it a lot. It covers it really well. As far as all your oil po oil points and it's it's really pretty simple you know at first i thought it was a daunting task about man where am i going to know how to oil this because of the you know nothing wrong with the seller i got it from even though there seems to be a you know they do speak english but there is a language barrier because the seller i got this from is from canada and i'm assuming french canada in the french Can canadian area but anyway, that's not here nor there but um the manual that they supply with it is a little, leaves a little bit to desire. You know, it's photocopied off, so it's black and white. Uh, you can get the sale right manual and it has, it's a small book, but it's very detailed and it's got color, which makes it nice. And it goes through a lot of stuff, you know, if you have troubleshooting and all that. So, and those, and honestly, if they say right, would have, you know, had uh, a zigzag machine, that came in a nine inch bed i would probably i would have probably purchased it from them just because you know everything i've read they have phenomenal customer service and every time i've dealt with them they've been wonderful so there's nothing wrong there uh, I'm, I'm at 13 minutes with this so i'm gonna try to cut it i'm gonna cut it short here that way it's not too long you guys aren't watching a really long video of me rambling on so uh if you guys have any questions or anything like that leave them a comment below uh, give it a thumbs up, share, whatever, you know, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, there was uh, one thing I did forget to mention. The thread I'm running through now is size V92, which I got from the Thread Exchange. It was great. The thread's been working awesome. Um, that's, I mean, was, that's one thing I definitely you need to, I recommend make sure you get quality th thread from a quality supplier. That way you don't have any issues. Um, if you look up here, you can see my my thread stand or my bobbin holder or my thread spool holder there. The two upper ones, upper left, the yellow, have the yellow tab and the other one, you can see that has those uh, flexible holders on them. Those threads, I got one off of Amazon and got one off of uh, eBay, Chinese made. Um, they just do not perform very well. Uh, the bottom spools here, that you got the red, white, black, and the green. Um, those small, those spools, those are Gutterman extra strong. They're same as uh, they, same as Terra Forty or uh, T Seventy or V Sixty Nine. So it's definitely thick and it's good quality thread though too. That's something you can get at Joann's. Uh, at least my local one, I can find it there. Uh, so yeah, this machine, as far as thread size, um, it can handle regular uh, home sewing machine thread. You just may have to make sure you adjust your upper tension and your bobbin tension before you do it. Um, and it can handle all the way up to, I have running V92 right now, so that's pretty thick thread. 
Um, but I imagine that I could probably handle pretty close to V138, and that'd probably be about the max. Um, other than that, I think that's the last little tidbit. And like I said, if you guys have any questions, uh, just post them below. I do my best to comment whether the video is a day old or two years old. I, you know, I'll get back to you the best I can. Uh, just, you know, if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. Thank you.